Hey, it's Lee Halliday, and today we are going to learn all about recursion. We're going to solve six different problems using recursion, and in the process learn some of the ins and outs of it. So we're going to start nice and simple. We're going to start where we're basically counting down from five to one. So um, that's basically the basis of recursion, is to repeat something until you're done. So you always have sort of those two ideas of repeating something and then knowing when to finish that repetition. And the way we repeat something is through recursion, basically doing the same thing over again, but with a variation of it. So let's get into it. So our goal is to call this function here, countdown, and it's gonna output console.log54321. So if we were to just plop a console.log in there with the number, and then come over here and run it, so we get five. Those undefineds, ignore them. They're for problems we're going to solve in a second. Um, what we need to basically do now is know, do we want to keep counting down or have we reached the bottom? So what we're going to do is we're going to check if the number is greater than one, that means we want to keep counting down. So after five, since we're going down, our next number would be four. So what we want to do is basically call countdown again. That's the recursion. Uh, basically, you're calling yourself. You're calling the same function you're already in. But we want to go with four. So we're going to say num minus one. And then it's going to come up here with four, output four. And then it's going to count to three, two, one until it runs out. So we run this again, and we count down to one. And then we're done. So I'm going to comment this out so we just don't have that output. Um, messing us up. And now we're going to go on to the next problem where we're summing an array of elements. So here's the array of elements we have here, and it adds up to 15. So we want to try to do this without sort of using your typical iteration like for each um, or reduce or something like that. So what we want to do here is basically, let's first check have we reached the end. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if the elements dot length is zero. We are going to return zero as sort of the last, uh, the last response. You always need a way to end your recursion, so you always need this check. See how we had an if statement, if statement. There's basically always an if statement in recursion. So if we get down to this point, we basically know that we need to keep counting. So what we could do is we could put it in an else, but because this returns, you, you don't need it, but we'll just keep it here. So what I want to do is basically take the first number in here and then add a sum of the remaining elements. So we're going to split these out and we're going to call this the head element and then the rest is equal to the elements. And then what we can do is we can return the head plus a sum of the rest. And this is going to keep iterating and keep sort of reducing the size of our array until it doesn't exist anymore. So if we run this, we get 15. But just for a little bit more visual, um, visual output, let's console.log the elements as we're iterating over them and we're changing the value that we pass to the recursive call. So we run this and we see that it starts out full and then it, it's missing the head, then the head of that, and then eventually you get to an empty array. And the reason I return zero is because it will basically, at this point, it's like 15 plus zero sort of thing. Because the, the last when you pass an empty array, that's when it stops the recursion. Okay, so let's get rid of the console.log. Let's comment this out and move on to our next problem. So here we're going to basically calculate the power of something. So 2 to the power of 2, 4 to the power of 4, that sort of thing. So I think 4 to the power of 4 is 256. So we're going to try and solve this. And basically what we're going to look for is we need to know when we want to stop calculating the power. So we're going to say when our power is equal to 1, what we're going to do is just return the number. So let's imagine this. What's 4 to the power of 1? Um, that should just be 4, which is the num here. So if I were to run this, we get 4. But we have to handle what happens if you pass 
um, 4 to the power of 2, which would be 16. So we didn't handle this at all. Let me just clear that. Okay, so in our else portion here, we need to basically say we want to return the number times the power of that same number, this time one less. So if it starts out as the power of 4 or the power of 2, we would want to say to the power of that minus 1. So that it keeps counting down until it gets to 1, in which case it just returns the number itself. So if I were to run this, 4 to the power of 2 is 16. If I increase this to 4 to the power of 4, we get 256. So that's how you can use recursion to calculate the power of something. Next problem. Okay, factorial. So factorial is when you see like 5 with an exclamation mark, but what it means is you do 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So it's this same counting down, which we've seen a few times so far. So what we need to do is basically know when have we counted down long enough? Basically, when are we at the last one? So we'll just say if the number is, um, we could say when it's equal to 1, or we could say when it's less than or equal to 1. If that's the case, we're basically just going to return 1 as our final sort of, here you go, multiply this whole thing by 1, um, which would be this last one here. So else, this is where we're going to do the recursion. So what we want to do is we want to say, let's multiply the number. So imagine we're starting out as 5. Um, we're passing 5 here. We're going to multiply the number times the factorial of the number minus 1. So whenever we call it, we're always modifying it a bit. Otherwise, it's never going to end, in which case this um, thing that kicks us out of the loop will never execute. So by doing this, factorial of 5 is 120, which is what you get when you multiply these numbers together. I think, let's try it with factorial of 2. That would be 2, right? And we'd change it to 3, which would be 3 times 2 is 6 times 1 is 6. Cool. So it seems to be working. That's how you do factorials with um, recursion. Comment that out and move on to everyone's favorite thing that you never have to actually do, but everyone uses for, uh, for teaching recursion. It's Fibonacci. Kill me now. I hate Fibonacci. I'm sure he was a good guy, but still. Okay, the way Fibonacci works is basically when you've got a, a string of numbers, these two numbers added together give you 1. Then 1 plus 1 added together is 2. 1 plus 3 added together is 3. So it's always the previous two numbers equal what the next one is in the sequence. So here we, have, we would have 8 plus 13, which gives us 21. So we want to calculate, in this case, the sequence of 15 Fibonacci numbers. So let's actually start a little bit simpler. And we're going to say, give me the Fibonacci sequence of 2. And in our case, it's 0 and 1. So what I've actually done is I've initialized this array. Um, basically, if you don't pass the second argument here, the accumulator, or like how many numbers we've calculated so far, is going to start as 0 and 1. So we're sort of cheating a little bit, but what we're going to do is first handle our edge, our end case. So if the remainder is less than or equal to 2, we're just going to say return the accumulator. So if we were to run it here, boom, Fibonacci solved to two places. Perfect. But if we say three places, we're screwed now because it, it doesn't return anything. So we need to handle the else. And in that case, I need to grab the, the previous two elements in the array. So if we're trying to calculate 21, we would calculate these two. So what we're going to do is basically call Fibonacci again. But first, we want to get what are the two numbers previous in this accumulator. So we will say we've got the second last one and the last number is equal to slicing the accumulator array, basically stripping off the last two and then destructuring them to get them into a variable. So now what we're going to do is we are going to return the Fibonacci 
of how many um, sequence numbers we have remaining, so remaining minus one, and then we're gonna pass along our accumulated value here. So what we basically wanna do is take our accumulated value and uh, splat it in or whatever that thing's called, um, and then add one more number. So that would be the second last times the last gives us our new last number. So let me just, there we go. So if I were to run this now, it doesn't work. What did I screw up? <laughs> All right, let's figure this out. We've got rem minus one, so this would be two, and then it would return our accumulator. Second times last is the last two. Hmm. Oh, I know why, I'm an idiot. Okay, I was multiplying them together, and the reason it's zero here is because I was multiplying uh, zero times one, which is zero, you add them together, not, there we go. Now we have beautiful Fibonacci, take that. Up to 15, there we go. So that's how you calculate Fibonacci using recursion. So I think the next example, we're just gonna comment this out, is probably the coolest one, and it's basically how you can do operations on trees of data. So like a parent that have children and those children might have their own children, which might have their own children. So you can't really iterate easily over those because you don't know how many levels deep you're going to need to go. So instead what you do is you do recursion to basically just handle one level of that tree at a time. So this is the data we've got working with and it's basically the species data of coffee. So everything started out from the Arabica bean and then from there you have heirloom and bourbon. And so heirloom has children, I just didn't record them. So bourbon has two children that I've recorded, Katura and Mocha. And then we've got another type, which is a child of Arabica, which is Tipica, and it's got Kona and Java. So basically each level of the tree has a node and then that node's children, which could be just an empty array. So we call this by passing in our root tree. And we've destructured this here to basically have the node in a variable and then the array of children. So what I wanna do is just output the node. So we'll just run this and we get Arabica. So what I wanna basically do now is iterate over the children of Arabica. So I'm going to say, if children dot length is uh, greater than zero, that means we wanna iterate over. We don't really need an if statement because you can just, if there's nothing in the array, you can, you just don't have to iterate. But what we're going to do, yeah, screw this. Maybe it won't work, but, but we'll see. What we're going to do now is we're going to take, say children dot for each. And then for each child, what we are going to do, so remember a child is itself a tree. So because it's a tree as well, we're gonna call print again with the child. So now when we run it, we get both sort of the ultimate parent and then heirloom, and then we get bourbon and its children and then typica and its children. But it would be nice if it sort of indented each level of that and here's a cool little trick. So instead of using console.log, change it to console.group. So if I were to run this, basically it just, for each group, it indents one level. But you can see here it, it sort of forever indents, so that's useless. So what you do is you basically tell the console when the group has ended. So here we're gonna say when the node has ended, call this. So now what you get is a sweet tree printing out where we have Arabica and its children on this level, and then we have Katura and its no children from then on. So in 
just a few lines of code, we've iterated this tree structure of data using recursion. So yes, we did iterate over this, um, this array using the typical for each, but that's fine because inside of each one of those, we recursively called ourselves with a smaller portion of the tree. And um, basically, the, the loop is stopped here when children is an empty array, because in that case, there just won't be anything to for each over. So it won't keep sort of going down deeper and deeper levels. That was it. That was recursion in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed it and you can recurse um, many functions. All right, take care. Bye.